Okay, real quick. I'm gonna try and get this out to y'all today, which is Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, basically, like I said, I've given up on, uh, a while back I said I gave up on school already. I normally do that near the end of the year, because, you know, tests and all that. And they just cram all of those tests for every subject in one week. And each test is like four hours long, so yeah. But, uh, no, I gave up on it already, because it's stupid. And I'm giving up on it even more because my family complains that, hey, you're failing, you're failing when I'm not. And then yet when they want me to, you know, do good, they force me to go do manual labor on the days that they know I get the most work. So, can y'all guess what I have to do the day? <laughs> you guessed right, manual labor. Oh, there it is. My shoulder, if you cannot hear in the background, pops like continuously forever it popped earlier in a very weird way which actually made it pop less never mind it's back uh, it's gone again there it is again so basically what i'm saying is my body is destroying itself let's begin <laughs> we begin with deku doing his normal routine of making breakfast talking and eating with inko and then heading off to school when Deku gets to school, he's immediately greeted by, well, Oraka and Ida, who want to know more about his quirk. They want to know more about it in detail. He only, he only gave a brief explanation about it. So Deku would tell them, and I think Ida would ask a little bit about his fighting style, saying that he notices Deku only, of course, uses his legs. And Deku would say, yeah. He says that he is a chef, meaning he has to use his hands to cook. Without his hands, he can't really cook. So, you know, to protect his hands so he can use them and cook freely, and, you know, save them from any damage, he basically, well, he basically, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, only uses legs to fight. He starts, he says he started implementing his hands into his fighting, but not for attack, just to move around, saying that he could use his hands, you know, like a handstand and then spin around in a circle to basically attack people around him as if he was somewhat like a top in a sense. But for actually attacking, he does not use his hands, saying they're not as strong as my legs, of course. No one's arms are as strong as their legs, saying legs are probably four times stronger naturally than your arms for the normal person, but he's trained his body through well extreme training, of course. Ida would ask, you know, if it's just kicks that he does or does he have a specific fighting style? And Deck would explain, oh, the fighting style he, you know, uses is called the black leg style. And, you know, it's basically like he says, it's all about the legs. And as they're talking, they'd be interrupted by Aizawa. Now, Aizawa would tell them that today they'll be going to the USJ, but first, they need to pick class representative, president, and vice president. He says he doesn't care who they pick, just pick them and make it quick. And they all start arguing. Eventually, we get to the cafeteria, and everyone, you know, eats the food. But instead, we don't have Deku eating you know, the school food, we have him eating his own food, which, you know, I think Ida and Oraka would ask about, like, they'd immediately notice it, say it looks good, and then even smells good. They'd ask, you know, what it is. And Deku would say, when it comes to, like, a name of the dish, the name of this one is weird, saying it's called Attack Cuisine. Saying he's not really good at making it, but what it's normally made in, or not really made in, but it's normally made you know, a lot of it is made, normally for a large group of people, and it's normally eaten to strengthen a person's, you know, body physically. So it doesn't really affect their quirk unless their quirk is, you know, something to do with their physical body, like a mutation or, let's say, super strength or something like that. Instead, this would make your body physically stronger without you needing to work out. Of course, it does even, it even enhances how fast you grow, slightly. Saying he's not the best at making it, and it probably only makes him slightly stronger each time he eats it. But, every, you know, every little bit counts. Saying he only eats it, like, 
once for one meal a day, but then again, he eats a lot of food per meal. So, yeah. He says he has a few more if they want to try it. And, you know, they probably would. Ida thinking, well, that's probably why he's so slim, yet so strong. And he asks Deku how long he's been eating this, and Deku says, well, he's only actually started eating it since he started UA. So, yeah. And he says he's definitely noticed, you know, some effects, but he's not that really good at cooking it. The better he gets at cooking the food, the better the effects will have. So, yeah. And Orok would ask, are you sure you are, your quirk has nothing to do with this? And Daiko says, nah. Saying, a diet, depending on your diet and your body in general, depends on how foods affect you. This food just so happens to strengthen your body physically a lot. He would say, think of someone like Ojiro, you know, their classmate. If he were to take this, it would strengthen his body slightly, because, of course, it only strengthens mine slightly. But if I were to make it to where, when you eat it, it makes you probably almost two times stronger, he could eat this and his, you know, body, without needing to be bigger, could still be decently slim, while having the force of someone probably ten times bigger than him. You get what I'm going at. Now... We would basically skip to the alarm going off, and Deku immediately says it's fine, it's the media. They'd ask how does he know, and he says with his sensory ability. And they remember that yes, he had a sensory ability. He says he has it on its basically its lowest ability, which is the sense stuff around him. And he has it almost the entire, well almost around the entire school. So yeah, and he notices that the media broke in, so yeah. They say that's a pretty good ability and ask if that's how far his range is. Deku says no. His range can go pretty far, but he has to concentrate more, saying with barely any concentration he can keep it at an easy, you know, easily this distance. So he'll know, you know, where people are. And if he's on like a patrol as a hero, or you know, doing stuff in a bad neighborhood, he'll know whether or not, you know, someone has bad intent or intent and how they're feeling and all that. So yeah. They'd say, then shouldn't we stop the other students? Uh, we'd hear Oraka say that. Deku says, yeah, probably. He says, he'll be back in a second. He begins to walk over there, and as he notices, you know, a bunch of students basically crowding the doorway, he uses Geppo to jump right past them. He jumps past them and into the crowd, and then uses Geppo again to jump past them once more. He'd stop the crowd, and they'd try. They try to push past him, but surprisingly, he's able to stop them pretty easily. Even if they have a lot of people there with a lot of force, surprisingly, they can't really move him. Deku then tells them to calm down and pushes them back pretty easily, telling them that, you know, they came to UA to be heroes, or at least most of them did, saying that some of you came here to be heroes, some support heroes. And he says, some of you are just here in general. Telling them that a lot of their teachers here are heroes. They're fine. Saying besides, it's not even an attack. It's just the media who've gone through the gates. Now, some of the students would be angry at this. Some of the class, you know, class 1B students. And I think one would walk up to, walk up to Deku and would ask if he thinks he's better than them. This being Monoma. And one student would say, Monoma, don't do this right now. And Deku says, so you're Monoma, huh? And Monoma asks Deku if he thinks he's better than them. Deku says, I don't think I'm better than you. I know I'm better than you. Monoma then, you know, tries to copy Deku's quirk and use it on him. Deku says, not gonna work. Saying, I don't know what you tried to do, but whatever it was, it didn't work on me. And one was like, huh? He says, why didn't it work? I was supposed to copy your quirk. And Deku says, oh, does your quirk work on mutation ones? Because mine is somewhat like a mutation in a sense. And then in other ways, it's also not like a mutation. Saying it's a very weird quirk, he says. As he basically walks past him, pushing him to the side pretty easily. Monoma is upset, but is stopped by some of his classmates. Deku then uses Gebo to get back to the cafeteria, and sit back down, where he then proceeds to eat a few more, you know, servings of food that he basically just has on him. 
So yeah. Now, Ororok and Eden immediately notice a slight, you know, boost in their strength. Their bodies move pretty easily, actually, they think. And they ask, Deku would say, oh, that's, you know, that's just the food. It's taking its effect already. Saying it strengthens your body permanently. So you don't need to constantly be eating it to, you know, get an effect from it. So you could eat it once and it will strengthen your body. But eventually, like, you know, if you stop working out and stop eating it, your body eventually will return to being, well, a normal human body. But with this, you become superhuman to just plain inhuman, eventually. They'd head back to the classroom, and while in there, people would start, you know, picking president, vice president, and representative. President being Momo, vice president being Ida, and representative being Deku. Deku would ask why is he, you know, representative, and Ida would basically say why he was representative. And Deku says, I mean, were any of you, you know, alarmed? Because I wasn't. Saying, and some of them would be like, would murmur, yeah. And Deku would be like, huh. I guess they're just used to stuff like this, huh? And they would ask, what does he mean used to stuff like this? Deku says, oh, alarm's going off. Thinking that there's like an attack or something. Says, the restaurant he works at, you know, this happens every now and then so he's used to like stuff like this but thanks to his quirk he's just you know he knows when stuff is going down so yeah now as they're talking Aizawa would come in tell them to be quiet and to follow him telling them that they're heading to the USJ now they would then you know be getting on a bus and on the way to the USJ they talk about their quirks eventually it gets to Deku and as he's describing his quirk they would reach the USJ only going into a bit more detail about what he already told them now, they'd go in, and Deku is immediately trying to get the layout of the land, using a sensory ability to basically, you know, know stuff. Like, know where, you know, stuff is, and so on. And he immediately notices something. There's people here, and asks Aizawa about the people here. Aizawa says, what does it mean? He says, well, in the boat area, there are people in there, in the water specifically. Saying some of them look to have fish-like, you know, uh, bodies, so I guess it's their quirk, and says there's some people hiding in buildings, some in the rocky area, and then he turns and says, and they just showed up. As, you know, he turns and says that, Aizawa would turn to see all the villains, and he says, well, why couldn't you have said anything sooner about this? Deku says, I mean, they just showed up. And one of the students would ask, you know, I thought we were doing rescue training. Aizawa says we were and then proceeds to tell them that this is not a drill. He tells 13 to, you know, take the students back, or try to get the students out, or, well, first would ask, you know, if they can get, you know, communications through UA. Having Kaminar, you know, send a message, but it would not work. Now, Deku looks around and says he can't really notice anyone that's, you know, blocking the signal, so, yeah. Saying, although his sensory ability allows him to sense a lot of stuff, it doesn't really allow him to sense or know what their quirks are unless, you know, it's a mutation. So, yeah. So, he can't really identify who's blocking the signal. Now, he would quickly move at high speeds, move everyone out of the way. He basically pushes a lot of students back. They are, they are wondering why he did this, and I saw would ask why he did that, and he noticed a giant portal opening up below the floor and a few smaller ones, you know, around there. Aizawa realizes that Deku's sensory ability allows him to sense incoming attacks, so, yeah. He knew this was going to happen. Or at least he could sense that it was going to happen. Now, Deku could sense that someone was about to, you know, appear again, and as they did, he used Geppo to kick them. And they get kicked all the way through the portal and back out. Deku says that villain down there, as he's pointing to one covered in a purplish fog, basically says that one has some kind of, I guess, portal quirk, allowing him to open up one portal to another place, I guess. So yeah, you get what I'm going at. Now, everything would basically be like, as I would think we need to get the students out, so what would they do? They'd basically run. You know, some students would say we could fight, but Aizawa says that, you know, as your teacher, you are getting out of here. And Deku says, F 
fine. You know, he's, he doesn't really care. He d He's not down fighting, but he's also not against it. So, yeah. They get to an area, and they know they can't head to the gate, and they're like, how do we get out? And Deku basically kicks through the, you know, through the wall, and Aizawa would ask, how did he do that? Deku says, I just kicked it. Aizawa says, no, this thing is supposed to be a few inches thick. It's supposed to be steel. You know, not just that, but like, specially made steel from someone's quirk being, you know, at least 20 times stronger than normal steel. Deku says, huh. So I guess I've just gotten a bit stronger since, you know, since the... Basically, a uh, hero versus villains fighting exam, you know. Now, they would get out and immediately send messages to UA. Now, at this point, the villains are wondering what's going on, and they have no idea. So, they just, you know, divide their forces, and this is when Aizawa decides to come in, and begins to, you know, Spider-Man around, basically. He uses a scarf to get from place to place without being noticed, and we'd actually see, you know, him taking out some villains. Eventually, you know, all heroes arrive, including All Might, and with them showing up, a lot of the villains run. There probably would be a quick skirmish between All Might and the Nomu, but, you know, that end as it ends. And All Might has a bit more power than he actually would in this series, so yeah. Overall, no one really got to see how strong Deku was in this. And no one actually got to, you know, gain any experience, or at least not that much. So, yeah. Now, we'd skip. We'd skip about a week or two. And this was because, well, they had a few days off of school, and they had about a week of training, I believe. So, yeah. We skip about, we skip about like, two weeks or whatever. And the sports festival is announced. Now this would happen and in this we'd actually see well we'd see them be told what's going on them preparing for it and Deku trying to improve his well his food you know when he eats uh, the attack cuisine and he's able to improve it to it being probably about a point you know 1.5 multiplier each time you eat it which will slowly add up so yeah now we would skip to the sports festival, and when we get there, you know, someone has to make a speech. That person being Deku. I believe I gave him the highest points in the, you know, in the entrance exam, meaning he would, well, he would be the one giving the speech. And it's basically, you know, he's just telling the other students to give it their all, and to, you know, do what UA normally says, and you know, go back, go past their normal limits, and says he's just here to have some fun. Now, he would walk off, and some of the students are in a better mood. They don't want to, you know, kill Class 1A. And Bakugo then shouts, I'm gonna win, and you're all losers, basically. And then we'd see Deku, you know, walking past Bakugo, hitting him in the neck like, you know, Kendo does the Monoma. So, yeah. Now, the exam would begin with a race, and we already know what happens. Deku has been improving his, you know, his food, so he's naturally stronger, faster, and of course, more durable. Not only that, he's been given Ida and Oraka some. So, of course, you know, their bodies are naturally stronger, faster, and more durable. So, yeah, they do definitely better. And although Ida's quirk isn't really affected by it, although it's... Is it a mutation one? I'm not sure, actually. I'm really not sure. Hold on. I can't remember. Is this quirk considered a mutation quirk? I'm not sure. Um. I guess it could be, but there's also some mutation quirks that are considered to be like, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, or some quirks that look like mutations, but are, you know, What's it called? Uh, emitters. So, uh, okay, so yeah, it's a mutant type, I guess, or what I'm looking at says mutant. So yeah, but uh, basically, you know, I guess it wouldn't really make his engines that much stronger, just his body, because I I'm not sure would it affect him. I don't think they would. 
I, I don't think they would ma affect his, you know, his quirk. So, yeah, we would basically see them all race, and Deku probably eating this for two meals a day, and Ida and Oraka only getting it probably like once every other day, and not eating it as much as Deku does, would probably, well, would probably see Deku not be as fast as he'd if he were to use a Cipro Burst, but definitely being close. But when it comes to their downright speed, Ida using his engines at his max without a Cipro Burst, and Deku going his max without, you know, Gepo, we'd see him, you know, them being pretty equal. Now, they would both be able, to, or I think Deku would dodge Todoroki's ice, Ida would probably not dodge it, of course Deku would know it was coming, and he basically leaps out of there pretty fast. Him being one of the fastest students, easily, you know, easily gets out. Then we'd see Ida decide, you know, he's not going to use Recipro Burst, but he's going to use a version of it in a sense. Knowing that Deku has different, you know, has a different version of that technique that he uses to gain speed very quickly, but only for a brief instance, he decides to use a version of, you know, what's it called, um, uh, I forgot what the, I literally just said it, what was it, um, Recipro Burst, there we go. But instead of, you know, using it, he charges it up for like a second and then uses it. It's basically just like he does with his actual, you know, engines for his kicks. He, you know, he goes at decent speed and then he pushes them normally past the limits without going into the Recipro Burst territory. So the kicks are even more powerful. In this, though, he would basically use them to get out of there at immense speeds without using Recipro Burst. But he would have to take it down a notch because it's... It's on the it's on the fence about being reciprocal burst and without being it. So there is probably small amounts of smoke, you know, coming out. But it's not, you know, overdoing it. So he would probably be able to catch up to Deku. You not completely, but since Deku had a head start, yeah. Once he gets you know, once uh he gets to the what's it called, the uh, little not trench but canyon area, I guess. He'd be able to just go across it, you know, the, the ropes, by, you know, just so much sliding across it using his engines, while we'd see Deku basically using Gepo to jump from, like, little pillar to pillar. So, yeah. And we skip to the end. Deku gets first. Bakugo, you know, has been improving his explosions to a degree, probably still getting second. And, actually, I think we could see Ida probably getting third. Once he gets past those, you know, those lines he'd probably push it, you know, past his normal limits. And once he notices that the, you know, once he notices that the, what's it called, the uh, mines aren't really damaging, they just sting a little, but not that much, if he's able to, you know, go past them, he'd probably, you know, take a little damage, not a lot. So, we could see Ida getting, you know, third place, because, you know, it's Todoroki we're talking about. And Todoroki being Todoroki, you know, would probably try and stop them. But Ida, you know, you know, not being, not like being frozen, would probably push right past them. Heck, I feel like Deck would actually slow them down a bit by, you know, kicking them here and there. He's not against the rules. So, yeah. So we'd see Deku first, Bakugo second, and Todoroki, you know, uh, or Ida third. Because we could see Deku kicking Todoroki and Bakugo before they get to the, you know, the minefield, or heck, even when they get to the minefield, we see him, you know, pushing them onto the mines, so you know, they're going to be down for a bit, even if, you know, Baku is able to catch himself with his explosions, he'll be down for a bit, Todoroki, you know, is going to free stuff around him, and might struggle to actually get up a bit, because he's on the ground, and he can run on it decently, but that's running, because they're a part of his shoes, he doesn't really have anything to help him, you know, really not slide that aren't on his shoes, so it'd probably take him a bit to actually get up, if you get what I'm saying, so yeah. Next, we'd see the cavalry battle be announced, and immediately, you know, everyone's out for Deku's head, because he has like, what, 10 million, 1 million, I don't know, he has a lot of points. Now, we'd skip to the locker rooms where everyone's preparing, and We'd see, well, we'd see the teams, you know, being made, and of course, we'd see Todoroki say that he's going to, you know, he's going to beat Deku, 
and Deku says you can try. We bought, we'd see Bakugo jump in, and then we, when those two are gone, we'd see, you know, Ida challenge Deku. You know, see who's, who's the better, you know, speedster. Who's faster. And Deku says, well, hmm. He says, I'm not really sure. So you're probably faster if you were to push your engines into overdrive, but when it comes to my speed, I could, my max is probably only like around 80 miles per hour, he says. But then again, I can do that for longer for a longer period of time, so yeah, he's not really sure. Now, we'd basically skipped the teams being made, and overall, they'd probably be the same. We'd see the same teams being made, and not only that, Oh, well, the same teams would be made, but the setup would be a bit different. Although Deku could easily be on the top, he decides he's going to be on the bottom. He could probably, he could literally carry all of them on his back without them needing to be zero gravity, you know, make them float. So, yeah. But with that, we're going to see similar, we're basically going to see them floating with Deku basically, you know, just running around, and he can use Geppa to jump from place to place, and if they need a maneuver in the air, although Deku doesn't have Skywalk at this point, he does have Mei, who has those, you know, rockets and the jetpack and all that, and she could probably modify them to, you know, to do only one quick boost instead of one strong boost to boost in the air, and because Orok is, you know, there, and she can make stuff float, yeah. Now, who's going to be on top? I feel Tokiyami's going to be on top. Because Deku, he's a very good strategist in this. He's very good at analyzing the situation. And he has Toto, or not Tokioki, or Tokiyami, you know, he has Tokiyami. You know, Dark Shadow basically floats in the air. What happens if you put him, you know, above you? And he says, not really sure. So Deku says, you could probably use Dark Shadow somewhat like a parachute. So if we need to, we could literally just stay in the air, mostly. We could probably avoid people, and if it comes to it, we could rocket into the air using Oraka's zero gravity and May's, you know, jetpacks and, you know, basically rockets, and then we could stay in the air for longer periods of time, you know, once Oraka releases it, to basically get a safe landing with your Dark Shadow. And not only that, you could use Dark Shadow to extend outward and get more points if we need to, saying, although you could be mostly our defense, you're... You're going to be pretty good, basically, is what we're saying. So overall, they probably just evade everyone. They don't see the, they don't need a point in, you know, getting any points, so they just stay there. And we'd see, well, we'd probably see once, you know, once we see Ida and Todoroki, you know, teaming up, they'd realize they're not going to be able to get Deku's team. It's a weird team, but the way they're using their abilities with each other, it works perfectly, even better than we'd see Todoroki's team and even better than Bakugo's. So they'd probably go after each other. With, we'd see, of course, Deku in first, Todoroki in second, and Bakugo in third. And the fights would go basically the same. So the first fight would be Deku versus Shinso, which he would be warned by Ojiro, you know, he couldn't remember anything. But we would see Deku basically, you know, go around and quickly, you know, just run at, you know, uh, Shinzo at high speeds, you know, just as fast as Ida, and, you know, Ida at this point, he probably wouldn't have shown off for Super Burst. He probably could have, but there is no need to do so. So we'd see him still having that as an ace. Now, we would see, basically, uh, we'd see Deku go and, uh, well, yeah, we'd see him go and fight Shinso, which we'd see him speed off and quickly just kick Shinso out of the ring, which probably would hurt him. And, you know, at this point, a lot of been a lot has been said about class 1A and other students. A lot a lot. I mean a lot. A lot. And some of it, of course, has been about Deku. And a lot of people are confused on his abilities. Is it physical enhancement? Isaiah would say no. From what I've learned, you know, from what I've learned about, you know, my students as they've been in UA is Midoriya, he'd say, has a very unique quirk. Saying he was diagnosed quirkless as a kid, but he says he still awakened one, one with a few different abilities. Saying that the abilities he knows of has nothing to do with his physical body. But one ability he has is, well, 
is a sensory ability. He can know the position of anyone in a certain radius of him. He knows their intent, their emotions, and so on. He can learn the trajectory of an attack, so he can basically know where stuff is going. And another ability, you know, he says he's not going to spoil it for the other students because it's not going to be fair if he gives away, you know, what's left of Midoriya's abilities. But I'll explain them if he uses them. So, yeah. Next fight, you know, Deku versus Todoroki. And Deku eventually get Todoroki to use his, you know, his fire after, you know, Todoroki, you know, is losing horribly by Deku. <clears throat> And Deku says, just use your fire already. I mean, like, you keep saying I won't use his fire, but it's your quirk. How dumb do you have to be? And, you know, this would anger Todoroki because he's basically being insulted, but then he's also realizing, yeah, it is my fire. It's my quirk. So, you know, he'd do what he does in the actual series, but we'd see as he's about to launch it, Deku says, cool. And he basically, you know, jumps high into the air as Todoroki launches it, basically evading it. And Deku's like, oh, as he's breathing, he's like, that was close, I could have gotten hit. So even then, I have a decent resistance to heat, but my clothes don't. At least this suit doesn't, he says. He then falls to the ground, and as he's falling, he kicks Todoroki, you know, in the side. And then sends him flying, winning. Now... Next would, I believe, be Deku versus Ida, because I believe Todoroki fought Ida in this, after he beat Deku. So we see, you know, Deku versus Ida, and this ends as you think it would. It's basically seeing who's faster. And they give it their all, and Ida, for the first time in the actual series, or not series, but in this what-if, would use reciprocal burst, surprising everyone. Thankfully, Deku knew where he was going and could easily avoid it. He uses Geppo for both legs to rocket him into the air, basically making it where Ida, you know, just uses Reciprocal Burst for nothing. And he only used his Reciprocal Burst as a last resort after they had a decent fight with Deku using Geppo to boost forward and kick Ida and, you know, do a lot of different things. But as he used Reciprocal Burst, Deku's like, nope. And we're going to say Ida went, you know, did this who basically, you know, let's say they're in the middle. So he was sent rocketing back to the edge and as a way to not get, you know, kicked out of the arena and to try and, you know, build up a decent amount of speed to kick Deku out from the middle outward, he's going to, well, use your simple burst. But Deku just jumps out of the way. To Ida's and everyone's surprise when Ida, you know, is going like 90 miles per hour. So, yeah, I believe it was 90 miles. I'm not sure, but he, he goes a decent distance, basically. So... He shoots himself out of the arena. Next, Deku versus Bakugo, which goes heavily in Deku's favor. Deku, for the first time in the actual What If, shows off another ability he has. Armament Hockey, or as he just calls it, hardening. He's able to harden his will, in a sense, around his body. And does this when he goes to basically, you know, not deflect, but, you know, tank one of Bakugo's attacks. Eventually, we'd see, you know, Bakugo use Howitzer Impact, and for the sports festival, Deku decides to show off. As Bakugo's doing his Howitzer Impact, we'd see Deku, well, we'd see him doing uh, Diablo Jambe. But not just any Diablo Jambe. We'd see him, uh, which version was it? I think it was, um, hmm, let me think, I think it was the... Hmm. Not that one. Okay, here we go. So it's this one. Diablo Jean Bay, uh, Spectic or Spectre? I don't know, it's, it's weird. But basically, he, you know, spins in a circle even more than what he actually did in the, you know, at the, you know, what's it called, um, Hero vs. Villains battle. And people are wondering what he's doing, and Aizawa begins to explain, since it is the final match. He says, this is how he begins to build up a bit of power, but he's spinning a lot more. And as he's spinning, you know, stuff around him begins to melt and leave, like, little burn marks here and there. And once he's done spinning, after spinning for, like, a good minute or two, as, well, Bakugo is doing the same, and we're actually going to say Bakugo actually got the idea to spin to build up a bit of power from Deku's, well, Diablo Jambe. Now, 
they're both spinning, and as they're both spinning, they go for their attacks. Deku, you know, he is immune to the fire. And, you know, his fire burns way hotter than Bakugo's does. So even though Bakugo's would have a decent amount of force, the actual flame itself wouldn't burn Deku. Only his clothes, or at least most of it. He'd probably block some, you know, some area. So his underwear would probably be decent. As he basically does Diablo Jambe, uh, what's it called? Uh, Spectre, or whatever. Basically, he jumps high into the air, or, or uses Skywalk, and then proceeds to stomp on Bakugo using Diablo Jambe, Spectre, with, you know, repeatedly stomping on him with a very, very good amount of accuracy. Thankfully, because of, you know, he'd have a decent amount of accuracy because of his observation hockey and knowing where it's going to go. So he stomps on Bakugo and sends him flying. He'd land, and the smoke would clear to see Deku, you know, just in his underwear, revealing his body, most most of his body, but his ripped body nonetheless. And that's where I'm ended off here. If you guys want more of this, tell me down in the comments. You know, Deku's declared the winner after he gets a change of clothes, and so on and so on. So, we'd skip to the, well, we'd skip to nowhere. I'm going to end it off here. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a wonderful time. Bye, guys.